Welcome. I'm Steve Winnick. I'm the writer and editor in the American Folklife Center at the Library of Congress. And I am here with um, Pastel Leblanc, with uh, Emmanuel Leblanc, and with Pascal Mius, who are the members of the band Vichten. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about their musical tradition and their group. So welcome to the Library of Congress. Thank you. Good to be Congrats. here. Thank you. So to set the scene, let's talk a little bit about your background. Um, two of you are from Prince Edward Island and one from the Ile de la Madeleine. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about Prince Edward Island a little. Just give us a little background on, on the culture there. Sure. So uh, Pascal and I are from the largest Acadian community. Um, it's called La Région Evangeline. There's six Acadian communities on the island, and they're kind of all a little spread out. Um, and about 4.6% of the population that have French as a first language. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, we grew up in this area where uh, traditional music is very prominent. It's kind of passed down from generation to generations. Um, we learn mainly our music from either our parents or from people from the community. Um, yeah, and the fiddle style is uh, Acadian with a mix of, that's, that's kind of a mix of Irish and Scottish with a, a different groove, let's say, um, and French, French songs, and uh, it's something that's actually pretty uh, common still today, people, it's a, it's a real living tradition there. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned uh, the Acadian culture, mm -hmm. and uh, your deputy ambassador was here earlier and, and spoke about the sort of distinction between Quebec culture and Acadian culture. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah. Oof. Yeah, they're very uh, different. We just have a different history. So um, the Acadians uh, uh, came to the east coast of Canada in 1604 and uh, went through a deportation in like 1755 to 59. Mm -hmm. So um, all of those traditions uh, are really different because we were in the Maritimes, we went through the deportation, and uh, a lot of the people that were deported went back to France, and then a lot of them went to Louisiana, so people know of the Cajun culture. Mm -hmm. So we're di directly associated to the Cajun culture in that sense, where we're all originally from the same place. Um, it's a little bit complicated because there's a lot of Quebecois in Quebec. Uh, so for, Acadians. In uh, Quebec. Acadians in Quebec. Mm -hmm. So, uh, for instance, Pascal is also Acadian, but he's from a Quebecois region, uh, Les Îles de Madeleine. Um, and then on the other side, yeah, the Quebecois just, they just have a different history completely. Right. Um, coming to Canada four yeah. years after the Acadians came over and now going through a deportation mm -hmm. and uh, just a different reality. So, but they all they all came over from from France. From France, yes. mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, just in different in different years and, and different. settled in different places and things like that. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I think a difference too is like Acadia doesn't really have a specific territory anymore. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was at the time. Right. But uh, you know, when we say Acadia, we say the east coast of Canada. Um, you know, and Quebec really has their own province and right. their yeah. own political, you know, everything is kind of settled there. Acadians were kind of like all dispersed in diff different areas of the Maritimes and the world, really. And right. so, um, yeah, it's kind of like this kind of dreamy thing we're all grabbing onto, yeah. but, but there are yeah. real, um, uh, yeah, re real social movements and everything that happen within, within our areas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great, thank you. Well, let's talk about Ile de la Madeleine for a minute, the Magdalen Islands, yeah. which is, um, I mean, I guess Acadian in origin, uh, yeah. some of the people, but, but part of Quebec for a long time. Yeah, so that's, you know, for me, I'm an Acadian, 100%. Mm -hmm. And on the Magdalene Islands, at least 90% of the population, they are Acadian as well. So that's a little bit confusing because a lot of people uh, just thought it's okay, Acadia, it's just in maritime provinces, but we are in the maritime as well. Mm -hmm. So we are Acadian. For me, somebody asked you where you come from. So I'm going to say I'm a guy from Magdalene Islands, Ile de la Madeleine. Mm -hmm. I'm a Quebecois. I'm a Canadian. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so it's anyway, and a lot of Canadians, they're from Quebec as well. So that's, it's diaspora, right. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that's why, but the contradiction, of course, it's in the maritime provinces, but I feel really 100% Acadian mm -hmm. as well. So Magdalene Island, it's a small province. It's seven islands relieved by sand dunes. Mm -hmm. It's 100 kilometers long by some of islands, 60-ish kilometers. And it's relieved by sand dunes and a lot of music traditions 
it's really, really, uh, really, uh, like, really popular there. Mm -hmm. So every family has at least one musician, of course. It's <laughs> really, really, it's kind of impressive, mm -hmm. you know? So, yeah, it's, it's a beautiful island, and I left my island uh, 25 years ago. My parent, my father plays guitars, and he's really proud of music. So when I was young, he just want a, a son play fiddle. So <laughs> there I am, you know. Right. So yeah, that's about it. So you started playing fiddle uh, on your home island, and yes, yeah. And which island are you from? The, the principal island. Mm -hmm. So the the Kapomal okay. island, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And where do you live now? Charlottetown. Okay, so yeah, yeah, that yeah, makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So just geographically, um, is it right to say that the Ile de la Madeleine are actually closer to PEI, yeah. to Maritimes, than they exactly. are to the rest of Quebec? Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's really, that's why we are, we have the, the, the similarity with all the maritime music. provinces, right. you know, music yeah. and... Yeah, what went on the radio, you know? Yeah. The radio was in Cape Breton, uh, not in Cape Breton, Nova Scotia, in Tiganish. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, my father to told, me, told me that uh, in these uh, 40, when the radio came on the island, it, it was from in Tiganish, Nova Scotia. Right. And it was the music from there. So that's why we have a lot of influence from there as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. so that, and that would be Acadian and also... Uh, just Nova Scotia music. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And of course, a lot of influence from Quebec as well, and right. Cajun as well. So it's a mixture of all kind of music. Mm -hmm. yeah. So um, the Leblanc family was that? Were you a, a musical family as well? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. My mm -hmm. uh, my dad's a music teacher. He mm -hmm. retired a few years ago, but he taught music uh, at Evangeline School for 33 years. And my mom, she, she denies it now, but she, she is a great <laughs> step dancer and a musician. Um, so yeah, growing up, they, there were a lot of house parties at the house and uh, yeah, it was just kind of a gathering point. Mm -hmm. My dad's really social and he would just kind of be open, like, you know, come to the house, have a tune or something uh, in a general sense. But he also has still to this day, two really, well, two annual parties. Um, I won't say the dates because everybody's going to flock. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Show up at your house. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, twice a year he organizes these parties and it's just like, um, you know, people come and they start playing music, uh, yeah, around eight at night and it just goes on all night. Yeah. So lots of, um, lots of music in the house. Our grandparents on, on either side, so my dad's parents were more into jazz. Mm -hmm. My mm -hmm. Grandfather played the saxophone, and my grandmother loved to sing, you know, Billie Holiday or whatever. Right. So that was yeah. kind of their side. They were in the city of Moncton, so it was, it was more like a that that was their thing. And on my mom's side, uh, her dad played more traditional music, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and he played um, accordion, and he mouth was a great dancer, organ. mouth organ. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. so it's always kind of been around. Yeah. And so now Moncton is in New Brunswick, so yes. that's what you were talking about, that the Acadians are not just in one province, yeah. but in throughout the Maritimes. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, definitely. So um, New Brunswick is the only bilingual province in Canada. There's probably the bulk of Acadians there, um, just the massive population. The city of Moncton has a university, uh, an Acadian university, mm -hmm. and also Radio Canada is there. Um, but yeah, there's Acadian communities all over PEI, Nova Scotia, Les Ile de Madeleine. There's even one in uh, a little bit in Newfoundland right. and, and everything. So mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. All right. So so you mentioned jazz and and traditional music as sort of part of the elements of your own tradition. Yeah. What what is the traditional music of your home region like? I mean, wh and what are the roots of it? Well, it, it's. Uh, I think as far as songs go, they're all mainly, they came from France. Yeah. So since the Acadians settled about 400 years ago, they brought with them the, the songs of their uh, country. And, and you can recognize those songs easily, usually by the, the mention of castles or certain towns, you right. know, <laughs> Paris and Rennes and, and Nantes, whatever, or swords, you know. It, it's, um, and they've all evolved. So there's, you know, hundreds of different versions of the mm -hmm. same songs. Mm -hmm. So that's mostly um, Western France, then. 
Yeah, yeah. 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 Le yeah. Poitou is where the Leblanc family mm -hmm. comes from, mm -hmm. but there's families from uh, Bretagne, Normandy. There's even some from the south of France and mm -hmm. all over, but right. mm -hmm. yeah. And then, um, and this is the dif difference I think with Cajun music is we, after the deportation, Irish and Scottish settlers came to the island. So we got a lot of those influences into our music. So the mm -hmm. dancing comes probably directly from the Shannos dancing of Ireland, mm -hmm. when the logging camps were going on, people were exchanging uh, steps or whatever. Makes sense. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, and then the tunes are, yeah, just Irish and Scottish, but played with an Acadian feel, which usually means no ornamentation, mm -hmm. a different bowing stroke. Mm -hmm. um, different ways of, of turning the tune, things mm -hmm. like that. Right. And the foot percussion yeah. makes a big difference mm -hmm. too. Yeah. We also and have mouth music, which is mm -hmm. uh, an Acadian tradition, and that used to be really popular at home too. Like we can find some in the archives, but it's just like lilting in right. Ireland. It's just mouthing the tunes. And apparently there were some really good uh, mouth music um, musicians at home that would that would just do it for a whole night of dancing. There were no instruments, mm -hmm. and they were just diddling yeah. tunes for like two hours while people were, were dancing, which is really fascinating. And there would have been probably feet, so mm -hmm. there would have been feet and mouth music. Mm -hmm. and, and you guys made a special effort to develop that for, for Dish 10, right? Some mm -hmm. of the mouth music. Yeah. What yeah. was that like? I mean, I guess we always, as kids, you know, I, we didn't actually play instruments until later on. Like we played piano and we were step dancers for a long time, uh, but we loved the tunes. tunes. So I remember us like diddling and I remember dad saying, hey, can you diddle me this tune? You know, and we would know like whole albums of yeah. just doing this. So it, it always interested us. And later on, you know, we found out it was really Acadian and it used to be like that in the dances, I think we started looking into the archives to see if we could find more. Mm -hmm. And our, uh, our historian on Prince Edward Island, Georges Arsenault, uh, who collected a lot, uh, we went to see him and just said, like, show us everything you have. And he went through it with us. So some of them are from the archives, some are just things that we kind of created as well that mm -hmm. had, you know, the same feel and mm -hmm. the same idea, you know. Right, well, you mentioned archives and of course we love that at the Library of Congress. Yeah. So, <laughs> so um, where, where do you find um, the songs and, and tunes that you play? Um, we find them a lot at the University of Moncton. Mm -hmm. um, that's where we got a lot of the, the you know, copies or of transcripts and things like that at the start. They have a collection of books called like, Le, Les Chants d'Acadie mm -hmm. that were mm -hmm. collected by Parents and Chassons uh, from all over. Acadia. Mm -hmm. uh, so those were great kind of resources to look into. Uh, there's some at the, um, the Musée Acadien Miscouche. Yeah. There's an Acadian museum on the island, so mm -hmm. there's some there. And, and there were some in Chetican. Yeah. Um, but I think we were kind of turned, like uh, we kind of knew about it because of a group called Berchoua that mm -hmm. was from our region, and, and we knew that they went through the process. So they kind of got us involved like they probably gave us our first tapes yeah. of right. archives and then told us you can actually go here and do this work and we used to go for a few days at a time and just kind of pick up the stuff and at first it was just off tapes mm -hmm. so it'd take a long time right. to get all that stuff now it's i think it's not that long ago but it's all Digit digitalized yeah so yeah. you can find it a little mm -hmm. bit easier um but it's a great resource yeah. and sometimes people give us collections like on the magdalen yeah. islands there's a friend of ours that also has all of the things from the Magdalene Islands that was at Université de Laval, and she brought it uh, back to the Maggies. Um, so yeah, we have access to that, those those recordings too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then some of the songs like you're, you were mentioning, like a couple of the Lomax songs, mm -hmm. were off of a 1934 to 1937 Cajun Creole album that we found in. Aspen, Colorado, like 10 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> that we just, you know, kept and um, yeah, always kind of put it on and had to listen and eventually decided to do something with it. Excellent, I should yeah. say th those are recordings from 1933 and 34 that John and Alan Lomax made for the Library of Congress. Oh, lovely. And they oh, ended up awesome. on, uh, you know, various releases that you can find in record shops and that's how you got shivers. them, I guess. Yeah, yeah. That's, great. that's great. <laughs> so so it, it is very nice to listen to your recordings and hear some of our songs, the songs from our archive, I should say, yeah. um, and hear them being made fresh in a, in a different way than because Cajuns have been using them 
-hmm. for a long time as mm -hmm. well, those recordings, but it's great to hear the Acadian mm -hmm. take on them too. Yeah, yeah great. Thank you, for, <laughs> thank you for doing thank you. that. Yeah. So, um, so let's talk about, uh, you mentioned you know, that all of you had musical parents. At some point you moved beyond the, the family mm. scene and began to, to be sort of broader within the region. Mm -hmm. How did that happen for you guys? Well, um, yeah, I guess kind of in high school, we, Pascal and I anyway, started kind of playing. You actually had a job at, uh, at the Acadian Museum in Miskoch oh, playing yeah. music mm -hmm. yeah. uh, for a summer 16, or something 17. like that. Yeah. Um, and then the following year or something, we started university. And uh, it's kind of funny because we thought going from PEI to the city of Moncton that we would find a lot of tread musicians. Um, but there were, were, it was really rare that we could find someone to play with. Mm -hmm. So we started realizing that like, we had a, a really cool thing going on in PEI and that it would, it would be fun if we could get together and just kind of create a band and start working on some stuff. Uh, so that's kind of where it started with the group. Yeah, we met some other people that were interested as well and just kind of played with them. And it was kind of all a natural thing, like we did it for fun and then we did a showcase and it worked well and we saw that people actually wanted, you know, to hear more and, and we got more interested and, you know, kind yeah. of started, started playing more, or digging more for those things. Yeah. yeah, and the first people that were really interested in it from the showcases were were f from France. Mm -hmm. They thought it was really cool that there was this, you know, Acadian culture in Canada and yeah. they were doing old French songs and, you know, the link between that. So our first actual international tours were, were in France, mm -hmm. yeah. where we did some tread festivals. And, uh, and then you just kind of uh, learn as you go, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know? Well, it, it is International Francophonie Week, and mm -hmm. yesterday was the International Francophonie Day as we're having this interview. So it's good to talk about that, the, the sort of international scope of French language culture. Have you toured to other French-speaking countries now as well? Yeah, we've gone to uh, Belgium, and we've uh, done a bit of touring in Switzerland. Mm -hmm. Um, mm. I think that's pretty much I it, you know, it. and some, yeah. of course, some shows in Louisiana, sure. but yeah. uh, we, we play probably 90% of the time in English speaking countries, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, although we've done a, a lot of touring in, in France, like, and people often ask us, what's it like to, do you guys sing in English or something? <laughs> and it's never really, we've questioned, should we do a song in English? But there's so many Acadian songs that we, we want to do. don't need, you know, this is us, it's our language, mm -hmm. it's our culture. Um, and it doesn't seem to be a problem for an English mm. uh, speaking audience. They kind of listen to it like we would listen to Gaelic. Mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. a, it becomes an instrument instead of, you know, having to really hear the story. Mm. We, we talk about the story before, right. and then it mm. becomes a musical experience or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I noticed I was looking at your album, and I noticed that in some cases in the notes, you would tell the story in the English yeah. version, but not in the French yeah. version, yes. so people can <laughs> we, understand They can read it. it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that makes sense. Yeah. 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 So, so talking about the instruments that you play, um, so uh, I know typically the, the most common traditional music instrument is the fiddle, and, and Pascal uh, plays that so beautifully. But you guys are playing other instruments, uh, mm -hmm. piano accordion and piano and... Yeah. Uh, bazooki and whistles and mm -hmm. Bauron, yeah. which some of which mm -hmm. came in from Irish music. So how did how did that develop? Is that part of the the local tradition now in PEI? All those instruments? I guess a little bit. To. It's starting to, but uh, for for me on accordion, like I had never really seen many live like real people playing accordion. There were a few piano accordion players in our area that played with the fiddlers, but it wasn't too common. Mm -hmm. And listening to other um, styles like Cajun or Irish, like I just love the mix of the accordion and the fiddle. So there wasn't anybody to teach me and I, I was pretty late at starting, I was 19. But I think I just told dad like, I want to play accordion and he said, oh, I think like the neighbor has one in the, in the attic. Let me see if I can get it for you. <laughs> and sure enough, he came with this little tiny red accordion that had just like two scales. Right. And I just started on that and loved it and it went from there. Mm -hmm. And I just taught myself and just looked at a lot of people playing and listened to a lot. But most of the tunes that I would learn would be from a fiddle. Mm -hmm. So I listened to a lot of fiddlers and just transferred that because I thought it'd be cool to, to have those tunes on the accordion. Mm -hmm. yeah. And is piano pretty traditional in yeah. the tradition? Yeah, that's what I Almost I would every assume. house has yeah. 
or part, every party would have a piano at least, more than a guitar even. Mm -hmm. It would be like fiddle and piano. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. And how about your intru instruments? There's a, a range of them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, well, for the flute or the whistles, I guess. Um, so yeah, my dad uh, plays a silver flute. And when he moved to PEI, um, because he is from Moncton, so mm -hmm. although his ancestors were from PEI, he moved to, to PEI for a job. Um, and he was playing the silver flute. And so he started learning the tunes on, on the flute and really starting to play traditional music then, coming kind of from a more jazz right. parents uh, background. And got drawn, I think, to Irish music because it is there is a lot of flute playing, Irish flute playing and, and stuff like that. So he would play a lot of that music at home when we were growing up. And I probably just wanted to you know, copy him and start <laughs> playing the, the whistle right. or whatever. Mm -hmm. So it started mm -hmm. from there. Um, and then the, the Zuki, or yeah, the Boron, uh, did a lot of foot percussion and thought it would be, I, I saw an Irish person play once, uh, his name was Dunica Guff, he played with a band called Danu, they came mm -hmm. to PEI, yeah, and I, I yeah. yeah, and I saw Dunica play and I was like, that's the drum kit on this little drum, and mm -hmm. I, I just fell in love with it and mm -hmm. decided to, to buy one. Mm -hmm and started playing, and the bazooki was just, I wanted a stringed instrument, and it, it just kind of came naturally, it just kind of a progression of wanting to have different sounds. Right, well, yeah. I will say that the little Bauron is, a, it can be a full drum kit, but only if you're a very skilled musician, yeah. so you've done a really good <laughs> oh, job thanks. of learning it, and, <laughs> and learning to play that, because yeah. otherwise it's just one drum, yeah. But, yeah. but you can do so much with it if, you, yeah. if you stick with it's it. It's surprising, so. like people think job. it's really easy yeah. to play. <laughs> <laughs> good luck with that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so you mentioned the, the initial formation of, of a group, um, and eventually that developed. I mean, I think, mm. did you start as a family group more or less, or, or how did it work? No, it was more like a friends. We, we were, myself and Emma, we were in Moncton. We had another friend, Melissa Gallant, who was a fiddler that was living in Moncton at that time. So it was like the three of us mm -hmm. for a little while. There was another girl, too, that was kind of playing with us, and then it evolved, and uh, a guitar player joined the band. Then Melissa decided she didn't want, well, she toured, maybe a year and a half or something, but it wasn't the lifestyle that she wanted. We met Pascal at a festival in Moncton. He came just for fun and we had jammed. And it was like a whole year before, you know, Melissa left and we were like, what are we gonna do? Like, who are we gonna ask? And, you know, we remembered that we had such a great time and the music clicked. It was the same groove and everything. So yeah, I think we called him up. Uh, well, he came back to Moncton to play a gig and we were like, do you wanna maybe join our band? And he was doing like his last geeks with that project. So mm -hmm. the time was perfect. And a month later, we were in the studio recording that first Vishten album. Right. <laughs> so it was really, it was really a good timing and, and really great. And it, yeah, a great musical uh, collaboration. So yeah, so that's 15 years ago. <laughs> yeah. So what was it like to get that call? Were you, <laughs> were you expecting it or? You know, I, I just want to play music, mm -hmm. you know, all my life. So that when the girls asked me, I was really happy because like Pastel said, it was my last gig with my other band. So, and I used to play more, I, I always play trad music, but at that time it was more, you know, indie pop, rock style of music. Right. So I was really happy because I just, at that time, I just wanted to play more fiddle and more like my tradition from mm -hmm. Magdalene Islands. So for me, it was the perfect time in, perfect. The, the, the band, I, I really love the band. I, I heard them before and oh, wow, this is cool. <laughs> I just be into it. So uh -huh. 15 years, I'm here still. So that's really cool. <laughs> Sounds good. <Yeah. laughs> Well, so we've talked about all the instruments, but one thing we haven't mentioned yet is the foot percussion right. and, mm -hmm. and your background in percussive dance. Yeah. So how do those fit into Acadian music? First of all, what, what's your understanding of the origin of the foot percussion in, mm -hmm. in, in Acadian music? There's a few stories, yeah. a few theories, <laughs> but uh, um, it was mainly used, well, I mean, before, some Acadian communities weren't uh, encouraged to dance because dance was considered to be the devil or to be too too much fun. Trouble. If you had too much fun, it wasn't it wasn't really uh, great. So, so we told this story because somebody had told us that uh, the priests would sometimes pass through the communities, look in the houses, see who was playing, and then knock on the door and say, yeah. "You can't do this anymore." 
And it was, it was just something that we heard of, but then we found out that it actually happened to her grandfather in his community in New Brunswick where my mom lived uh, for a long time, nobody played music. So like, like our older aunts and uncles remember him playing all the time and then he got the knock on the door and they put the instruments in the shed. So for maybe 10 years, I don't know, 10, 15 years, they weren't playing music in the house. And their mom doesn't remember him playing ever. No. Wow. Yeah. Crazy. And then eventually is, yeah. it came back, but the foot percussion would probably come from that because they couldn't dance, but they still had the rhythm and they wanted to, so they would do it under the table right. so that nobody could see them dancing. Yeah, literally under the table. That's literally. pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 And what's the other theory? Um, it's just, to, I guess the other theory would just be that uh, Acadians didn't have a lot of instruments because uh, they would maybe have a fiddle, but to keep a dance going, they wanted the rhythm. So yeah. they would just use the feet. Yeah. to just drive the music. Sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's always been a thing on the island. We started step dancing when we were pretty young, five or six, our mom danced, she showed us her first steps, and then we were involved in a bunch of dance groups at home. And um, we, we would do a lot of choreography sitting down. We call it danse assise. Mm -hmm. So it's a little different than pot de rythme. Right. It's actual step dancing, sitting down. And that's actually yeah. one of her friends, Sylvie Toupin, brought that to the island. Uh, she's from Quebec, and she used to mm -hmm. um, she used to choreograph um, um, shows Sortil like Les Sortilèges and, mm -hmm. and things like that. She was a, a dancer, and and her her first job was to come to PEI and kind of train the Acadian dancers. And she brought the sitting down dance. So yeah, so we've been doing that since we were like maybe twelve or thirteen, like that choreograph choreography and then it just became part of like what we did mm -hmm. more you as know. a musical instrument mm -hmm. yeah percussive instrument yeah. yeah and so how did you make that decision to to move dance into being a an instrument in the band well it was kind of a traditional thing anyway mm -hmm. yeah mainly done by fiddlers uh you know doing it at the same time but it just kind of filled really mm -hmm. nice mm -hmm. it, it, yeah we used to do it the three of us uh i think we anyways more than one person well, at a time <laughs> dancing. Yeah, no, I was with Melissa. We used to like, and yeah. it was like just too too loud. Right. Because we yeah. had clickers on. Yeah, and yeah, it was yeah. like horrible. And then we developed, <laughs> yeah, the kind of the style to have like the boards that we have, which uh, is like a special board with a mic, and then and then no clickers because right. that was just too loud to uh, just a leather shoe. Mm -hmm. So it just yeah progressed to to find something that would fit m in what we were doing musically. Great, and that's another thing that you sort of consciously worked on developing yep. after the, you formed the group, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. 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 And more and more people are interested too, like for workshops or you go in festivals and people want to workshops because it's diff it's, it's so different. A lot of people d have never seen that before, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so I think we started seeing that it's it's really special and we should keep doing it. And, and anyway, it was keeping the rhythm as well in the band. And yeah. It was an essential part of of the sound. Yeah, right. and trying to go beyond also just the, the basic f step, which is just one, two, three, one, two, three, and trying to find other rhythms that we could do with the feet um, that we could play at the same time. I did a residency a couple of years ago, and it was all about that, just trying to get it under my feet, you know? Yeah. And I worked with uh, Sandy Silva, who's a, a percussionist that lives in Montreal. She's mm -hmm. from the States. and. We just kind of, she was like, just pick some music and we'll try to find some rhythms to it. And um, just taking those types of workshops with different people brought different ideas mm -hmm. to just bring the foot percussion a little further. Mm -hmm. Great. And she's mm -hmm. the dancer who worked with La Bottine yes. Soyante, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's a great group from Quebec that mm -hmm. most uh, folks into French Canadian music know about. So. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right. Great. Yeah. So you mentioned that you, the formation of Ishten was 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. Can you believe it's been that long? <laughs> no, not really. No. no. It's like, where did the time go? Yeah. Yeah. So what are some of the highlight moments for you of being in this group together? Wow. There's lots of them. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, definitely the trips and the places that we go, um, some stand out more than others. Um, <laughs> I, if I try to think of like one level, well, just going to different places and meeting new cultures and making, you know, uh, lasting friendships or lasting musical collaborations is really cool. Um, we just came back from Lafayette, for example, mm -hmm. a couple days ago, where 
we were playing with some of our friends for the first time on in an on a stage, like you know, collaborating on some Acadian and some Cajun tunes. Mm. That That's those really are really great moments for me. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. think those are yeah, kind of the best. Great. Yeah. yeah. What about you guys? Mm, for me, it was in New Zealand. Wow. Oh, a couple of years ago, and I have a lot in mind, but that that moment when we played the Nelson. Yeah, Nelson Island and with the Maui, mm -hmm. Maui mm -hmm. tribes and we the, the 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 welcoming from them was really special for us with the ceremony and it was really I'm gonna remember that forever mm -hmm. because the, we were just there and the, the contact and the, the like a it, yeah, for me it was really cool and we feel like, oh my God, this is, mm -hmm. that's, I'm really happy to doing this yeah. because I'm here in New Zealand and with that kind of people and we feel like once and you right. know, it was really special. Mm. Yeah. yeah, Islanders, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. <laughs> Maybe that's why. Mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. So do you have a, a memory? A memory. <laughs> uh, well, I'm just thinking, it just makes me think of when we went to Ireland uh, a few years ago to play and we went to Galway and played a little, what mm. was the venue called again? Uh, the King's Place? Or no, the... the cold Galway? Uh, yeah. Crane. The Crane, which mm -hmm. is like a venue that everybody goes to right. lots of sessions and stuff and we're upstairs and the guy says, what does Vishten mean? And, you know, for us, it's always kind of been a mystery <laughs> because we were, we've asked a lot of people, it, it's a song, but it's, we've been told it's a mix of Acadian and Mi'kmaq and that in our history, you know, they've, they've helped us survive throughout the years, but he was like, Vishten means something in Gaelic as well. And that was like an, an eye opener, just saying like, oh, maybe it comes from the Gaelic as well. And just to see how, you know, how it can just come and, and you know, it, it's a part of us too, mm -hmm. but how all those cultures together is kind of like what Vishten means for us. Right. You know, as the Akkadian and the Celtic sounds and the Mi'kmaq influence and all of that together. Mm -hmm. So that was a, it was a special trip and we met a lot of musicians there too and went to Limerick University and danced with people and, and just exchanged tunes. It was great. Sounds good. Well, yeah. jumping off of that, how did you choose the name Vishten for the group? It's hard to choose a name. Yeah, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. We started off um, with a band name, the Saltitude, uh -huh. <laughs> Celtic Which, Attitude, right. and then we were like, we don't like that name. Right. <laughs> no, but um, I don't know. We wanted something, I think, just different. That was us, and we knew Vishten. Like everybody sings this song at school. Like our dad was a music teacher. He taught it to everybody, and it traveled around Canada and even in the states. Like. People were singing this song, yeah. and it was part of our repertoire at the time. It was. Too. We we would sing the song, and Angela Arsenault was a really popular singer at home. She made it big in Quebec, and she, mm -hmm. you know, she sang that song. I think all of that together was was a choice that we were like, it's it, it's a cool name, and it'll you know it'll mean something. Uh, yeah, it's pretty Acadian. It's like an Acadian word as well. Right. Yeah. Great. Well, and you mentioned it has all the different influences. It, yeah. mm -hmm. it, mi it might have French, Mi'kmaq, and, and Gaelic in it, exactly. which is very Acadian. Yeah, yeah. yeah. there you so. go. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so you've developed now the, as this band for, for a long time, and what, what would you say is different about Vishten from the other groups that are playing Acadian music these days? Um, interesting. Well, I mean, there's... First of all, not a, a lot of bands playing traditional music in Acadian in Acadia, I'd say, professionally anyway. Professionally, there's yeah. there's lots of players, but there's not a lot of people that actually make a living doing that. Um, a lot of Acadian bands now play a, a lot of different styles: uh, rock music, jazz mm -hmm. music, whatever, mm -hmm. you know. But they'll sing it in French or, or whatever. So it's just there's a big scope of of Acadian artists out there. Um, so the fact that we play traditional music from these specific areas, PI and the Magdalene Islands yeah. with mm -hmm. its own repertoire is already different. Mm -hmm. And yeah. also the fact that we, as three individuals writing our own tunes, kind of bringing them together is also something that's different from everybody else, yeah. Yeah. I guess. And mm -hmm. the combination of instruments, I think. At least, for example, the last album. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, we incorporate the electric guitar and the Rhodes sound yeah. piano. Yeah. Uh, I think yeah. we not a lot of people do that now. So yeah. 
that kind of mix. So maybe mm -hmm. that's. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's all partly just organic out of who you are, and partly conscious to like mm -hmm. you yeah. know, make, yeah. make you know keep developing and change yourself. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Great. Yeah. So you've talked a couple of times about collaborations within Acadian and Cajun culture. Mm -hmm. um, can you talk a little more about your use of Cajun songs and your, your work on, on Cajun stuff? Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. Uh, we've been interested in, in it for a long time, I think, uh, you know, but you want to kind of do it and you want to do it right and not try to sound Cajun because we're not. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, we would learn a, or listen to a lot of songs that we felt like playing and it was kind of just finding our version of it that's that was yeah our version that that just incorporated some of our our sounds like Jolica Pascal explains at the end it's become the song that we've mixed in with uh, Magdalene Island's tune so it's kind of a mix now of, of Cajun and Celtic and uh, Acadian so yeah it's just kind of finding that so yeah, we, we tend to do at least one on every album that we record. Uh, so we still have all those archives, like Emma has the Lomax recording that she found. So, and we'll have, you know, that on our computers and just listen to them. Now we've met a lot of friends from Louisiana, like uh, David Greeley, mm -hmm. uh, that's passing some tunes along to us and other friends too that are saying like, do more, you know. Uh, Toby Lapierre was, uh, a song that we learned from a friend of ours that wanted to do mm -hmm. uh, some Cajun and Acadian collaborations. And then we found out that that wasn't a song that Cajun sing. It's like, it's in the archives, but there's not, re it's not on the circuit right. of mu musicians. So there was an interest from somebody last year to do an, uh, an homage to that. Um, his name is uh, César Vincent. Mm -hmm. But his collection, yeah, it's not really sung, so they did an homage to him last October and they released an album, I think, of his songs. So that's pretty cool, you yeah, know, to, to be able to maybe pick out, maybe our ears, you know, hear different things that, and for us it was really interesting to do and I think we'll keep, we'll probably keep uh, digging more right. into, There's so into that. There's so many great ones. Yeah. yeah, they're very mm -hmm. engaging songs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we're, dr we're just we're really drawn. drawn to them and what we could do with them and they're, because when you listen to archives, you can listen to listen to it one year, come back to it the next year, and you can hear all sorts of different things on mm -hmm. it. Right. Um, yeah, just depending what mood you're in, what mm -hmm. you, you you know what you're going through or whatever. But I feel like Cajun music. There's always kind of a picture that comes for me, anyways. Like mm. there's a yeah. there's there's always kind of a vision, and it's like there's something in there that's special. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we love Cajun music here, and we have a great mm -hmm. archive. In fact, you mentioned David Greeley, and he did a, a fellowship here mm -hmm. um, to, to learn some of the older tunes that oh, weren't great. being played. Oh, yeah. So that's one of, one of his sources has been our archive as well. Oh, so, um, so one thing that strikes me, you've, you've had a lot of success with um, the Canadian Folk Music Awards and the ECMAs and Music PEI and recently nominated for a Juno, so mm -hmm. congratulations with all that. But it also strikes me that there's a lot of um, regional levels of support for, for music that, that include traditional music within their frameworks. It, do, is, it, do you find that that's been helpful um, in your careers? Definitely, Absolutely. yeah, because we do get the support. People are excited about, about the new music that's being done with older music. Uh, especially in the Maritimes, we find, like on PEI, it's always been a thing, you know, and it's exciting to see the new groups that are coming up and doing something. People get excited about it, and we do get support from, yeah, there are like a category for traditional music right. in almost all of the awards, I think, in Canada. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, in, yeah, it's encouraging to, to know that it's recognized uh, beside all the other genres that are they're out there. Um, so yeah, I think we uh, we're excited to keep keep that and keep the tr the traditions alive because they're not static. You know, we're playing new music that is living in 2019. We're not trying to sound like old recordings. We're trying to sound like ourselves. Mm -hmm. In you know having this background, but uh, playing it in in our way with all the influences that we have musically from whatever we listen to or our own musical interests. 
Well, thank you yeah. so much. I think that's a beautiful statement with which to wrap it up. So yeah, thank you all so much. Uh, this has been Vishten, uh, a, a great band from the Acadian uh, area in uh, the east coast of Canada, so both Prince Edward Island and Ile de la Madeleine. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs>